Hello folks, and welcome to Hippie in a Race Car. I'd like to talk about online racing, and most specifically, when you should start racing online. The simple answer is, as soon as possible. I'll be honest, most of the improvements that I've made in the 15 months that I've been playing this game have come from playing online against people in around my own skill level. Because you get into a habit when you're racing AI. You get into a groove. You break at the same point. You take the corner at the same speed. You accelerate at the same place. It's the same lap over and over and over again, which isn't a bad thing if you're in the top 100 in the world and you can keep that consistency. That's awesome. Most people are not the top 100 in the world and are not necessarily able to keep that level of consistency. Being in a race with a bunch of people who are roughly the same skill level as you, they're going to push you. They are going to make you race harder, faster, you're going to brake later, you're going to accelerate earlier, you're going to try to beat them out of the corners, you're going to take that corner a little bit tighter just to shave off a few more milliseconds. And that's where your improvement is going to come. Don't do what I did. Buy a game, jump into an online race with absolutely no experience, no idea what to expect. Because there are those people out there who know the game very well and they're not necessarily interested in racing fairly and they will use the game against you. This is what happened to me. Bought the game, installed the game, run the game, start the race. The very first straight, I'm drafting behind the guy in front of me. He brake checks me. He gets knocked back up to speed, I get a five second time penalty. In other words, he gamed the game in order to win. I immediately quit the race, closed the game, and uninstalled it. That was about nine years ago. And it was a long time before I got back into online racing. The only reason I did was because I found a league of people who raced fairly. Highly recommend it. You want to race online and you want it to be a lot of fun, find a good league. Send me a PM, I'll send you the name of the one I'm in. Happily, no problem. But guys, seriously, race against people who want to race fairly. Even if you lose, it's still a lot of fun because you're learning. Now, don't race against Schumachers and Hamiltons, okay? Those guys are born with a steering wheel in their hand. Don't do it. You'll get your butt kicked. It's frustrating. GT7 actually has a really good matchmaking system. Generally speaking, you will find that the people you race against are about the same speed as you. So what do you need to know before you race online? Well, you need to know how to race. You need to know how to get around the track without going wide, without hitting walls, without spinning. Because when you do those things, your car goes out of control. If you're in a race with three or four other people around you, and you ricochet off a wall, you're gonna hit one of them. You're gonna wreck that person's race too. So. One of the things that I did is I raced the AI at a difficulty that worked well for me, that pushed me a little bit, but I made sure to always try to finish the race cleanly. Try not to hit the AI. Yeah, it's a lot of fun knocking them into the walls, I get it. But practice clean races until you can race consistently with a clean race, I would say 80% of the time. So what are some of the things you can do to be a clean racer. Probably the most important is to learn the rules of racing. For example, if you're going to make a pass, you are responsible for making it cleanly. It's not up to the person being passed. It's your job to get around that car in front of you without hitting them, without going off track, without hitting a wall, etc., etc. That's your responsibility. Here's another one. If you go off track, you must rejoin safely. That means you can't just drive back onto the track, onto the racing line, if there's cars there. If you hit one of them, it's your fault. Hold your brakes. If you go off the track, it happens, don't worry about it, but hold your brakes and stay out of the way. If there's seven cars behind you and they're very close and they're all going zoom, 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 you literally have to sit there and wait for those zooms. Because to do otherwise, you're going to end up running into somebody. You might get ghosted. It still screws with people in sim racing because suddenly there's a car in front of you and you sort of swerve maybe. Oh my God, are they ghosted? They're not ghosted. And hold your brakes. Stay out of the way until it is safe to rejoin. 
The next rule is, when you're racing next to someone, you must give them space. And vice versa. If you're beside somebody going through a corner, if you're on the inside line, you have to stay enough on the inside to give them a car's width outside of you to be able to stay on the track. Otherwise, it's known as forcing a car off the track. Don't do that. You're also not allowed to pass someone off track. It happens in GT7, but you're not allowed to do it. So just don't. Next, we have swerving on the straights. If there's someone behind you, you're not allowed to keep moving back and forth to block them. You're allowed to make one move. You can take the inside line, or you can take the outside line. But once you've made that move, that's it. You're not allowed to change your mind. Pick which side you want. Go on that side. If you're going into a corner and you think they're going to try to pass you, take the inside line. Learn how to defend a corner fairly. But you're not allowed to swerve around. In real racing, it's illegal because it inevitably leads to an accident. If somebody suddenly cuts across in front of you and you're going 160 miles an hour, you can't just swerve. You're going to spin. You're going to become a passenger on your way to the scene of the accident. Now going back to the first rule I mentioned of try not to hit someone. That includes things like rubbing is racing. Yes, you're going to bang fenders. Yes, you're going to knock doors. Try not to. Honestly, try not to. If you can race next to someone for an entire lap, not actually hit them, and neither one of you really gains any ground, that will be the most fun you can possibly have in sim racing. And a lot of people might think, well, that's really hard, and is that really possible? Watch a real race. Watch an actual race on a real track with real people in real cars. They almost never touch. And though you might say, well, this is sim racing, who cares, it's just a video game. A lot of people take this very seriously. There are people who literally make their livelihoods sim racing as streamers. Wrecking their races is not helping them in any way, shape, or form. It's not making you very popular either. So it goes back to what I had said at the beginning. Practice until you can race cleanly. Until you know you're not going to wreck anyone's race. Here's a secret. You're going to anyway. I guarantee you, at some point, you're going to wreck someone's race. If you're not doing it on purpose, send them an apology in chat. Other than that, accept it. It happens. Hard racing means you are on the edge of control all the time. If you happen to have the back end kick out a little bit and you don't get in control of it right away, you're going to spin. If there's somebody beside you, you're going to take them with you. Don't stress it. It does happen. It's hard racing. It's usually chalked up to a racing incident. Send them an apology at the end of the race, but don't stress it. Just try to avoid it. If you're interested in learning more about the intricacies of sim racing, I highly recommend you check out Jimmy Broadbent on YouTube. He does a bunch of videos where he takes clips from the subreddit Sim Race Stewards, and he actually acts as the steward. Now, he has a lot of years of experience as a sim racer and as a real racing driver, so he knows the rules. He knows the intricacies of racing very, very well, and he explains it really well, showing you this is what happened in this particular sim race, here was the result, and this is how it could have been avoided. Those are the tips and tricks that I really recommend. Things like I mentioned earlier. If you're going in for a pass on the inside of someone, but you're not alongside, they're entitled to the racing line. They're allowed to cut across that apex. That door is going to close. Don't go in there. And he has dozens of tips and tricks and these kinds of things that he will recommend to you as a sim racer to become a better sim racer. Check him out, Jimmy Broadbent. Now, in terms of dirty drivers, you're going to run into them. More to the point, they're going to run into you. It happens. There are people who actually know how to play various racing games so that they don't get penalties, but they knock you off and they use you to get around corners or as breaking points, you get the idea. Dirty drivers are out there. They exist, they're not fun. Nobody really likes them. They don't like themselves. Who knows? As I mentioned at the beginning, the very first person I encountered in my very first online race was a dirty driver. Man, that will turn you off online racing faster than just about anything. Find a league or just laugh at them and try not to get frustrated. It's not worth it. Because 
when you get super frustrated, you're going to start overdriving. The adrenaline starts pumping. Maybe you're looking at retaliation. Don't do it. Just don't do it. The game will ghost them. You'll go right through. It's crazy. It's actually got a really good ghosting system. It just doesn't have a very good penalty system. I will say that there are ways to get even with a dirty driver that look very innocent and will not get you a penalty. I will not describe them. I'm going to let you figure those out on your own. Well, there you go, folks. Some tips and tricks on getting into online racing and being better at it from a hippie. Because it really does come down to peace and love and getting on the podium. I hope this was helpful. If you liked, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And have an awesome day. I'll catch you next time. Peace.